Hey friends, welcome to Nursing Online Education. In this video, we will be discussing important question and answers of different nursing comparative examinations. Guys, let's get started. Here is our first question. 1. A child is found to be allergic to dust. The nurse is preparing a teaching plan for the parents. What should the nurse include in the plan? A. Housework must be done by professional house cleaners. B. Damp dusting the house will help limit dust particles in the air. C. The condition must be accepted because dust in a house cannot. D. The house must be redecorated because the environment must be dust free. The answer is option B. Damp dusting the house will help limit dust particles in the air. 2. A client who has just started on a regimen of halopyridol, Haldol, is observed pacing and shifting weight from one foot to another. What side effect does the nurse document in the client's chart? A. Akathisia. B. Parkinsonism. C. Tardive dyskinesia. D. Acute dystonic reaction. The answer is option A, akathisia. 3. A client who has been on a psychiatric unit for several weeks continually talks about delusional material. What response by the nurse is most therapeutic? A. Ask the client to explain the delusion. B. Allow the client to maintain the delusion. C. Encourage the client to focus on reality issues. D. Explain to the client why the thoughts are not true. The answer is option C, encourage the client to focus on reality issues. 4. A client has a tonic-clonic seizure. What is the priority nursing intervention during the tonic-clonic stage of the seizure? A. Go for additional help. B. Establish a patent airway. C. Turn the client on the side. D. Protect the client from injury. The answer is option D, protect the client from injury. 5. A nurse admits an adolescent to the psychiatric unit with the diagnosis of anorexia nervosa. What is the primary gain a client with anorexia achieves from this disorder? Reduction of anxiety through control over food. B. Separation from parents secondary to hospitalization. C. Release from school responsibilities because of illness. D. Increased parental attentiveness related to massive weight loss. The answer is option, reduction of anxiety through control over food. 6. A nurse is caring for a newborn with a myelomeningocele. What should immediate nursing care for this infant include? Changing diapers immediately when moist. B. Placing the infant in the reverse Trendelenburg position. C. Applying sterile, moist, non-adherent dressings to the sac. D. Positioning the infant prone with the legs slightly. The answer is option C applying sterile, moist, non-adherent dressings to the sac. 7. The cervix of a client in labor is dilated 8 cm. She tells a nurse that she has a desire to push and is becoming increasingly uncomfortable. She requests pain medication. How should the nurse respond? A. Help her to take panting breaths. B. Prepare the birthing bed for the birth. C. Assist her out of bed to the bathroom. D. Administer the prescribed butorphanol. Staddle. The 
The answer is option, help her to take panting breaths. 8. A nurse administers an intramuscular injection of vitamin K to a newborn. What is the purpose of the injection? Maintains the intestinal floral count. B. Promotes proliferation of intestinal flora. C. Stimulates vitamin K production in the baby. D. Provides protection until intestinal flora is established. The answer is option D. Provides protection until intestinal flora is established. 9. A child with acute post-streptococcal glomerulonephritis requests a snack, which is the most therapeutic selection of food the nurse can provide? A. Peanuts. B. Pretzels. C. Bananas. D. Applesauce. The answer is option D, applesauce. 10. A client reports experiencing nausea, dyspnea, and right upper quadrant pain unrelieved by antacids. The pain occurs most often after eating in fast food restaurants. Which diet should the nurse instruct the client to follow? Low fat. B. Low carbohydrate. C. Soft textured and bland. D. High protein and kilocalories. The answer is option A, low fat. 11. A person sustains deep partial thickness burns while working on a boat in a town marina and seeks advice from the nurse in the first aid station. The nurse encourages the client to seek medical attention, but the client refuses. The nurse advises the person to go to a health care provider if blisters appear. B. Urinary output decreases. C. Edema and redness occur. D. Low-grade fever develops. The answer is option B. Urinary output decreases. 12. A client with a history of gambling has legal difficulties for embezzling money and is required to obtain counseling. During an intake interview, the client says, I never would have done this if I had been paid what I am worth. What factor will create the greatest difficulty when assisting this client to develop insight? A. Feelings of boredom and emptiness. B. Grandiosity related to personal abilities. C. Projection of reasons for difficulties onto others. D. Anger toward those who are in authority positions. The answer is option C, projection of reasons for difficulties onto others. 13. A client has a urinary retention catheter in place after surgery. What should the nurse do when planning for the client's safety needs in relation to this device? A. Empty the bag every 6 hours. B. Maintain the tension on the tubing. C. Keep the system closed at all times. D. Keep the system closed at all times. The answer is option C, keep the system closed at all times. 14. What is the most important test the nurse should check to determine whether a transplanted kidney is functioning? A. Renal ultrasound. B. Serum creatinine level. C. White blood cell count. D. 24-hour urinary output. The answer is option B, serum creatinine level. 15. A pregnant adolescent at 10 weeks gestation visits the prenatal clinic for the first time. The nutrition interview indicates that her dietary intake consists mainly of soft drinks, candy, french fries, 
and potato chips. Why does the nurse consider this diet inadequate? A. Caloric content will result in too great a weight gain. B. Ingredients in soft drinks and candy can be teratogenic in early pregnancy. C. Salt in this diet will contribute to the development of gestational hypertension. D. Nutritional composition of the diet places her at risk for a low birth weight infant. The answer is option D. Nutritional composition of the diet places her at risk for a low birth weight infant. 16. A nurse in the prenatal clinic is assessing a woman at 34 weeks gestation. The client's blood pressure is 166-100 mmHg and her urine is 3 for protein. She states that she has a severe headache and occasional blurred vision. Her baseline blood pressure was 100-62 mmHg. What is the priority nursing action? A. Arrange transportation to the hospital. B. Obtain a prescription for an antihypertensive. C. Recheck the blood pressure within half an hour. D. Obtain a prescription for acetaminophen to relieve the headache. The answer is option A. Arrange transportation to the hospital. 17. A child has cystic fibrosis. Which statement by the parents about their plan for the child's dietary regimen provides evidence that they understand the nurse's instructions? A. I will restrict fluids during mealtimes. B. I will discontinue the use of salt when cooking. C. I should provide high-calorie foods between meals. D. I should eliminate whole milk products from the diet. The answer is option C. I should provide high-calorie foods between meals. 18. A nurse is caring for a client with glaucoma. What rationale associated with the need for treatment of this condition should the nurse include in a teaching program? A. Total blindness is inevitable. B. Lost vision cannot be restored. C. Use of both eyes usually is restricted. D. Surgery will help the problem only temporarily. The answer is option B, lost vision cannot be restored. 19. A nurse is caring for a client with a below-the-knee amputation. What should the nurse encourage the client to do to prepare the residual limb for a prosthesis? A. Abduct the residual limb when ambulating. B. Dangle the residual limb off the bed frequently. C. Soak the residual limb in warm water twice a day. D. Press the end of the residual limb against a pillow periodically. The answer is option D. Press the end of the residual limb against a pillow periodically. 20. A client is admitted to the hospital with a diagnosis of an exacerbation of asthma. What should the nurse plan to do to best help this client? Determine the client's emotional state. B. Give prescribed drugs to promote bronchiolar dilation. C. Provide education about the impact of a family history. D. Encourage the client to use an incentive spirometer routinely. The answer is option B. Give prescribed drugs to promote bronchiolar dilation. 21. A healthcare provider orders daily sputum specimens to be collected from a client. When is the most appropriate time for the nurse to collect these specimens? A. After activity. B. Nursing care is flexible. C. Realistic limits and controls are set. D. Physical surroundings are clean and orderly.
The answer is option C, realistic limits and controls are set. 22. Which factor is essential to consider when a nurse evaluates whether a unit environment is conducive to psychologic safety for a confused client with dementia? A. Needs are met entirely. B. Nursing care is flexible. C. Realistic limits and controls are set. D. Physical surroundings are clean and orderly. The answer is option C, realistic limits and controls are set. 23. A client is extubated in the post-anesthesia care unit after surgery, for which common response should the nurse be alert when monitoring the client for acute respiratory distress, restlessness, B, bradycardia, C, constricted pupils, D, clubbing of the fingers, The answer is option A, restlessness. 24. An for infusion of magnesium sulfate is prescribed for a client with severe preeclampsia. The dose is twice the usual adult dose. When a nurse questions the dosage, the healthcare provider insists that it is the desired dose and directs the nurse to administer the medication. How should the nurse respond to this directive? A. Administer the dose and monitor the client. B. Withhold the dose and notify the nurse manager. C. Administer the dose and document it on the client's record. D. Withhold the dose and notify the director of the obstetric department. The answer is option B. Withhold the dose and notify the nurse manager. 25. Which nursing action should be included in the plan of care for a child with acute post-streptococcal glomerulonephritis? A. Encouraging fluids. B. Monitoring for seizures. C. Measuring abdominal girth. D. Checking for pupillary reactions. The answer is option B, monitoring for seizures.